What is going on, guys? So, if you saw my last video, um, the 99 farming one, which, uh, yeah, very weird, um, I did mention that there was a good chunk of updates coming out. Those are live. Those have actually been live since the 19th, and as you can, as you know, the, the day I'm uploading this video is the 23rd. Um, I'll briefly go over that a little bit. Made some accuracy changes. Uh, by the way, this 53, 53, don't panic. That was after, like, a lot of effort of, like, spam clicking. Um, and obviously it's on a, a, a monster rather than PvP. Um, there's a ton of things. Uh, I'm going to start taking pictures and try to include the uh, more important things. We've got Sponsor Zone right here. Purple Max Cape. Probably not important to most people, but it is to me, you know. Uh, super Prayer Potions were added, which were very nice. And then the Blood and Soul Altars were added, so those should be pretty good as well. Uh, but there's a lot of things I didn't talk about. So if you want to have it read for it, this will be in the description below. But the main reason for this video is... Uh, new stuff, new things that we're currently working on. So let me show you what I've got right now. Uh, this one right here. Um, not much yet because I'm waiting for the responses in this video. But um, to save bank space, if I go in here, I don't want to spoil too much. Good, we're at the top. Um, there's only 352 bank spots, and to add more bank spots is very difficult. Um, I'm sure Dark might be able to do it, but with my skill set, there's just no way. So one way to sort of help with the uh, the, um, the bank space is sets. So all of these items, let me see if I can smooch this over a little bit. All of these items will now be able to turn into sets. So for example, if you have full gilded um, as, uh, as I do, right here, try not to spoil too much, uh, you can turn this into a set. So instead of four items, it'll be one item. So that'll be helpful and um, that applies to all the following items, which will also be used for the completion escape. Uh, one of the things that we heard a lot of from the uh, last survey I did was that there's not enough in-game content, there's nothing crazy to grind for, and I thought, you know what, we probably could use a Completion Escape. Completion Escape is pretty cool, it really sort of adds an extra level of things to do, things to grind for, and um, in case you're wondering, the Completion Escape will be... Um, it will be good. It's going to be the best in slot cape. It's not just going to be cosmetic. Um, there were a few discussions over whether or not just to make it cosmetic or not. But I think if it was just cosmetic, it wouldn't be really worth grinding. But, yeah. I don't know if you can hear those background sounds, but if you can, I apologize. But, uh, yeah, so this will be a part of it. You'll need to get every single item. So if you are playing the server and you plan on going for completion escape, you're going to want to start saving these items. Uh, you also don't need the plate skirts, so just uh, don't worry about that. Um, with this as well, you'll also need the six prayer books. I believe I have two of the six right now. Um, at the moment, they're not available from Clues, but um, within the next day or two when the update comes out, you'll be able to get them easily. So um, I'm going to work on more of the actual requirements just to sort of get a list for people to start working on before the cape actually does come out. Um, and then there is a new there is a new survey that I need you guys to fill out in the description below. Um, so I'll sort of talk about that uh, right now, I guess. So first off, lead your uh, enter your username for a chance to win a raid box. A raid box will be a random raid item. Um, I'll probably include some of the really really junk items in there just to sort of balance it out. But uh, yeah, this will be random. Um, there's no just enter your name and it'll, I'll do a random giveaway. So in fact, I'm gonna enter this myself. How about that? Uh, so then the next question, should we remove the chance of getting medium clue rewards from a hard clue? At the moment, you have a 1 in 5 chance to receive a medium item from a hard clue. You can also get easy items from medium clues. Basically, if you open up a hard casket, every single item that you roll has a 1 in 5 chance of being a medium. Um, and that applies to every single medium item, including the uh, troller, like the more trolly items, like the teak plank and whatnot. So if you ever open up a hard clue, um, let me just log it on, Jamie, and I'll show you. Hopefully we can we can get one to show. Watch about that. I'm probably gonna get like a Bloodhound Pet of Third Age. A Willow Shortbow, I'm pretty sure, uh, is a uh, medium item. But let me keep going. Yeah, see there you go, Bucket Home. So you have a one in five chance of getting a medium item. So you're probably wondering why does this even matter in the first place? Well, getting the items from the lower tier, obviously. Uh, if you get the gold elegant skirt I just got, or the adamant helm, or the Willow, that takes away from what possibly could have been a hard clue scroll. Um, so there's less of, uh, there's less, um, you know, there's less chances that, when you're doing a clue scroll, obviously you're doing it with certain items in mind. If you're doing a hard clue scroll, you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'll get Third Age, maybe I'll get Gilded, maybe I'll get some Dehyde. If you're doing Medium, obviously the goal is Ranger Boots. If you're doing Easy, 
you're probably just going for something, you know, there's nothing too crazy from Easy's. I think Easy's have the best chance of giving pages, so when the new page update comes out, that'll probably be the reason to do Easy's, but... Um, so there's there's a, there's a good reason to change this. Uh, also, the fact that you can get Ranger Boots from a hard clue scroll. Granted, it's a lot more rare because you have to hit the 1 in 5, and you have to hit the 1 in whatever it is to get Ranger Boots. Um, so removing this will reduce the chances that you get these junk items, and you'll only get hard clue items. So if you're actually going for hard clues for a specific reason, whether it is you want, um, you know, Katana, or if you want a... Uh, you know, a specific item, just anything third age or whatever, you'll have better chances of getting that. And it makes more sense with what RuneScape, you know, old school has. Obviously, if you do a hard clue, there's no possibility you'll get ranger boots or anything like that. So personally, I'm going to vote yes. Uh, it's one of those things where um, that's the way the current system is. That's what people know. I Actually, I don't know if any people even knew this. I didn't know it was a thing either. Um, I think someone got ranger boots from a hard clue, and that's what sort of open people's eyes to the possibilities of it. Um, so, I think it'll be a good update if we make all the clues their own uh, their own loots, but, you know, you can vote whatever you want. Um, the next up is, for the Completionist Cape, which cape should we use? Um, Old School has talked about adding Completionist Cape requirements soon, but it'll when I say soon, I don't mean, like, this year. I mean, like, maybe even next year. So it'll be a while before there is an actual Completionist Cape. And obviously, on private servers, you progress through the game a lot faster. That's kind of the whole appeal. You can sort of enjoy those, you know, those things you don't normally have to grind for, you know, on Old School. Um, so... Whenever there is an actual cape, we will switch over to it, assuming people want that, but for the meantime, which should we use? So, um, there's the possibility of a quest cape. We could also do a um, completionist cape for the normal quest cape, and then have a trimmed completionist cape, which is even harder requirements to get the cape trimmed. Um, but that doesn't really apply for the achievement cape, because currently, if you do all the achievements, you'll get the achievement cape from Zambo. Um, so, this will be the trimmed version of it, obviously better. And the Legends Cape, possibly with a different color, and if you have any other ideas of uh, vote. I kind of think the, the Achievement Cape or the Quest Cape are my two votes. I should probably make it so you can um, vote multiple opinions if you have them, but I think if I had to lean towards one in particular, I would go... I, I like both of them equally, but I think the Achievement Cape, just because it kind of fits off of the normal one. Um, the next one is, should we make the Zalandra scales required to make the Zalandra totem? Uh, like, reduce the amount. Should we lower it? Uh, currently, it requires 75k. If you're not familiar with what this update is, let me see if I can get one again. So basically, when you have 75k Zalandra scales, you can talk to this person right here, and people are probably wondering what she even does. Uh, if you have the, um, the scales and then a totem you can buy from the general store, right, yeah, for 75k cash, you can get this totem right here, and if you use a chisel on it, it will give you a random Zolra item. Could be the pet, could be uncut onyx, could be a uh, blowpipe. Let's uh, just use the chisel and chisel. Duh. Boom. Uncut onyx. Probably the worst thing you can possibly get. Um, so this costs 75k Zolra scales, uh, and uh, that people will think that that should be lowered. I think you get, as it stands right now, I think you get around 10k for Serpent Magic Fang. And then if you just if you like if you dismantle a uh, blowpipe, you get 20k scale. So it take three blowpipes to get one of these. Um, Zolra was a real big deal on Dark Asylum when this was coded, but it's sort of less crazy on here. And I think that with the Twisted Bow coming out soon enough, it'll be even more balanced. Like with one of you know the different items that people are going to be using in game. Um, so personally, I'm going to vote yes. I haven't really done much Zolra yet, but. Um, the odds, I mean, getting a totem is just, it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, so the next one is, should we add skilling pets to every single skill? So currently, with old school... Wow, Matt just got a bit. <laughs> I think he already had one, so that's a duplicate. Uh, currently, there is a phoenix pet from fire making, the rocky pet he just got from thieving, squirrel pet from agility, golem pet from mining, uh, but some of the skills don't have pets. For example, Slayer doesn't have a pet. Fletching doesn't have a pet, Crafting doesn't have a pet, Herblore doesn't have a pet, Smithy doesn't have a pet. Um, so those skills that don't have pets, should we add them? Uh, this is very easy to do, requires very little dev work, and I personally am a real big fan of this update, so um, I don't I don't really want to influence your decisions with my opinions, but I'm voting yes to that for sure. Um, in terms of what the pets will be, let me see if I uh, don't have the list out anymore. Let me get the list. Alright, so keep in mind... I'm only going to do these if they work. In order for a pet to be a thing, you obviously have to have the model. You have to have the NPC that the pet is. 
Uh, did I just click his raccoon hole? It's so adorable. I love the raccoon pet. I'm sad I don't have one yet. I need to grind that out. Um, so you see the pet right there. And then you also have the, uh, the item which you would drop to spawn the pet. Um, so I need both of those things in order to make a pet. And assuming I can get all of these working 100% correctly, it'll be a game. I want these pets to be very cool and very good looking. If they're not good looking, I'm not going to do them. So these are the ideas, and if they don't pan out... Um, then I'll switch them up, but they, there will be a pet regardless. Just depends on what, whatever we're working. And with that, sh if for the Slayer one, should we make the Slayer pet a Kurask or a Dark Beast? Personally, I like Kurask, but Dark Beast kind of makes more sense for Slayer. It's a more popular monster. And then if you have another opinion, vote here. Abyssal Demon would obviously make the most sense, but it's already being used, so we can't go with Abyssal Demon, unfortunately. Um... So, back to the scaling pets, I just figured to get that out of the way. So for Slayer, we have either the Curious or the Dark Beast, or whatever you guys vote. Those will be very easy, because, um, uh, yeah, I don't really want to get into it, but uh, basically, um, th th those will be easy. Um, so for crafting, the current idea is the Sheep Pet. I think it makes sense. Uh, I can't really give you pictures, because obviously I'm not going to, if it doesn't work, I'm not going to do it. Um, I'll switch up the idea, but the current idea for crafting pet is Sheep Pet. For cooking, troll chef, just a little troll with, uh, you know, chef's hat or whatever. Ignore the gear, I'm still in the process. It's already fixed, but it's just, you don't see it yet. Um, for smithing, we were going to go with the elemental workshop NPC, if it'll work. Um, the immediate concern would be that it might conflict with the rock golem. Then again, smithing and mining are kind of together, so it might make more sense. I don't know. We're going to go with whatever works the best, but the idea is for that little rock thingy. Um, and then for herb lore, we will use the gnome tortoises. You know, those big tortoise thingies in the gnome stronghold. Obviously, we're going to make it small. Small and adorable. But uh, that should be pretty cool. Uh, if you're wondering why it's a tortoise, that's just kind of what Ars 3 did. And there's really no other good ideas for anything on here. If you have any suggestions on things you might you think might be better, by all means, comment below. But these are just the ideas we came up with uh, a couple people online a while back. Um, for fletching, Chompy Pet. Choppy Pet is in-game, obviously, it already exists. Uh, there's no way to get it, but it, it it wouldn't really work anywhere else on this game, because obviously, I mean, we could add it to, like, Crystal Chest or something like that, and it'd be a Crystal Chest Pet, but that's kind of stupid. And for, you know, skilling pets, I think it really fits for fletching, because, you know, the Chompies, most of the time, you're, you know, you're killing the Chompies for the, uh, you know, to make uh, the... You're, you're killing them with those, you know, special errors you had to fletch and whatnot. And um, they're part of that whole quest. So I think that works. I think it, we already know it looks good, obviously, so there's no concern. And then the last one for prayer, uh, we're going to go with a ghost. Just uh, we're just going to try to find a good-looking ghost NPC, and that'll be straightforward. If you have any better ideas, by all means, shoot. But, uh, yeah, those are those ideas. Uh, for the next one, we have... Should we reduce the price for graceful dyes? Currently, they cost 175 marks of grace each. Uh, so in order to get a dyed set... Um, like a, if you wanted red grace or whatever, you would need 300 marks of grace. Um, this will be a completion escape requirement to have all five sets, so that would be 1,500 marks of grace. And if you've done any agility, you'll know... If you've done any legit agility, I should say, because there was a glitch early on in the, in the game where people got marks of grace pretty quickly. Um, but if you've done legit agility, I think on my account, I'm like 91 agility, and I only have 130 so I don't even have enough for one set. Um, originally, when it was coded, when I did it, I didn't really plan for it to be... I didn't even plan for a completion escape. It was never even an idea I had. So um, it was a little uh, expensive. It was more expensive than it should be. Um, so there's two ideas. Lower it to 100 or lower it to 50. I'm going to personally vote for lowering it to 50 because you, in order to die the graceful set, you actually have to have a set of graceful anyways. So you're already spending, I think, 125 on the graceful set. And um, this is just an extra add-on. So that's my vote. If you haven't, you know, if you want to hire or you don't even want to lower it at all, you know, vote how you want. Next one is the Invention Skill Cape. If you're wondering what the setback is on Invention, uh, basically, if you look right here, and if we load up Dead Men mode, um, if you look here, they're obviously different. There's construction, and uh, the total level is lower, whereas on here, there is no construction. That's sort of the setback right now. Once construction gets... Uh, once uh, Dark can change this interface to the actual old-school interface, we'll have construction here, and we can use instru instru construction as our base for invention. I want to change the icon, as you see, it's a little, uh, you know, little, what is that, saw and a log and whatnot. I obviously want to change that to something more custom, to sort of fit the, uh, 
you know, the skill just so it's a little more unique than rather than just kind of ripping off construction. Um, but whatever we can do is what we're going to do. But that's 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 why Invention is sort of being a setback. There will be a video soon, that, and I'll sort of go over how Invention will work. I'll sort of, it'll be the first sneak peek to Invention, because, you know, I talk about it all the time, and no one really knows what to expect with it. So I'll, I'll uh, show off a little bit of that. Um... So the question is, what should we use for the skill cape? Construction kind of makes a sense. If we can't change the picture, construction probably makes the most sense. Um, there's always a music cape. I, my original idea was to change the the, uh, the saw and log thing to the music icon, which would make the music cape make more sense. But again, I don't know um, which we can do. So it's probably too early to poll this question. We should probably wait and see what can happen. Um, and then the quest cape, assuming it doesn't get used for comp cape, always works. That's going to be my vote. Um, I do like the comp, the quest cape for the comp cape, but um, if that doesn't happen up happening, I'd probably prefer it here, because I, I do want it in-game in either direction. Um, but if we can't do the music, then probably construction scale cape, and if we, can't do, if we can do the music, then probably music. And obviously it'll be renamed to Invention, but that'll, that'll be the cape. And then also, if you don't want any scale cape for Invention, just because, you know, whatever... You vote that. And then the next one is, should we add prayer bonus to Third Age Armor? Um, Third Age Armor is always really cool and really rare and um, in the actual game because of its stats. It doesn't have bad stats, it's just it doesn't have strength bonus, and obviously on private server, strength bonus is, is you know, really, in the, in the real game, strength bonus is, is number one, so you, you, you gotta have that. Um, so the idea to make it more useful is make, giving it a good amount of prayer bonus. So currently, if you are praying for tasks... Um, like, let's say you're doing, like, just AFK and Abyssal Demons or whatever, and you're praying the entire time. Uh, this will be the best armor in game. Obviously, it's really rare, so it won't affect a whole lot of people. But, if you actually do get it, and it has the, you know, the best prayer bonus in game, it'll actually be useful, whereas before, it'll just kind of be a skilling outfit and just sit in your bank. So, I'm voting yes to this. Um, spoiler alert, I do actually have a piece of Third Age on my legit account, so I'm kind of biased in this. I figured I'd just let you know that, but I do think it'll be a good idea, and everybody I've asked has also agreed. So, there you go. That's the poll. Uh, all of it will be in the description below. Um, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, recently I had Matt do... Um, pretty much one of these, like a little, uh, just informational on every single boss monster, and, um, we're going to be working on, uh, fixing and improving all of the bosses that he's suggested needed changes, so that's gonna be good. That's another thing that was in the last survey, people were wondering, um, you know, people complain about some monsters being too strong, some monsters being not strong, you know, not strong enough, some monsters being, having good drops, some having not even worth them, so I, I asked him to really spend a couple of days on it, and I, I'm pretty, he did, he did do a good job, he spent a long time, if you played the game, then you, you're familiar with what he was doing, but, uh, yeah, we should, we should have a good idea on what changes need to be made to all the boss monsters before we add new ones, because the raid bosses are coming out soon, in fact, I'm working, I'm going to be working on the first one. I'm going to release them one by one so people can, you know, gradually build up to them. And I'll start off with, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just give you this Tecton. Tecton, the NPC that's actually in raids. Assuming I can get it to work the way I want it to, that'll be the first one. And obviously it'll drop Elder Maul and some other goodies. A little, little, little some other goodies I haven't really talked about yet, but uh, they just make sense once you see it all. But yeah, those will be coming out soon. Uh, so just keep checking back to the YouTube videos. Uh, I think that's all I need to talk about for this one. Fill out the poll. Win a raid box. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.